Hi, welcome back to educator.com. This is the lesson on the endocrine system. So we've got to talk about hormones with the endocrine system because those are the little messengers that make the whole thing work. The endocrine system is all about hormones, the glands they come from, and what tissues are they affecting. So the main function is to preserve homeostasis, to keep balance in the body, because depending on um, what your current condition is physiologically, something needs to be adjusted. Um, stimuli changes in the environment, um, conditions change, and your body needs to be able to adjust quickly. And hormones are the way that happens. So with hormones, um, it's all about endocrine communication, and it's inside the body, between tissues, um, via the bloodstream. Yes, there are other communications inside the body, like paracrine communication. That tends to be uh, more uh, close quarters, like one tissue neighboring another tissue and stimulating it that way. But with endocrine communication, you can have a signal sent from a part of the brain uh, that goes all the way to the adrenal glands, uh, which, you know, in terms of blood flow, is, is quite a distance. Um, so endocrine communication is uh, involving hormones in the bloodstream. Uh, each hormone has a target cell. That's an important term. So target cell. Um, for instance, uh, a very important target cell for insulin would be in the liver. Um, insulin is, is like a key that helps getting get sugar out of the bloodstream um, and, and packaged away in your liver. Um, other hormones don't impact the liver. Uh, because they have other target cells. Um, some hormones, uh, their target cells um, might be just the stomach or might be just uh, your muscles. Uh, so the target cell um, is going to have specific receptors, meaning specific proteins, uh, that is kind of like a lock and key mechanism. Um, so think of the key as being the specific hormone, and the lock corresponds to that hormone shape and that hormone structure. And then other cells don't have that particular lock, so that hormone's going to just drift by them and not dock on them and affect them the same way. Uh, so endocrine glands are the specific tissues or, or organs uh, that actually produce hormones. And in terms of uh, the structure of hormones, what they're made from, there are uh, three main... Uh, classes of hormones. Amino acid derivatives. So sets of amino acids in, in very specific sequences are going to give you thyroid hormone, uh, hormones from the thyroid gland in here. Um, epinephrine, uh, also known as adrenaline, is made from amino acids. Dopamine, uh, which is not only a hormone, that's also considered a neurotransmitter in the brain, uh, that's made from amino acids. Uh, peptide hormones, thyroid stimulating hormone luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormones. These two uh, have to do with the gonads, the uh, testes or ovaries. Uh, this one stimulates the thyroid gland so that it actually secretes and releases thyroid hormone. And then there's lipid derivatives, so made from fat. Uh, androgens and estrogens, the sex hormones, androgens associated with males, estrogens more associated with females, those uh, without fat in the body, you're not going to be able to produce those. Negative versus positive feedback. So with negative feedback, that's the most common way uh, that hormone release is regulated. Um, basically what happens is it's kind of like a thermostat. That's, that's, the, uh, that's the analogy that I think is best for this. So think about a thermostat. Um, let's say you set the thermostat to 72 degrees uh, or, or 20 degrees Celsius. Okay. That thermostat is going to cause release of cold air up to a point. So cold air is going to be released. Cold air, cold air, cold air. And then eventually the thermostat, thermostat rather, is going to shut off that cold air. When will it shut it off? When you finally get to 72 degrees Fahrenheit or, or 20 degrees Celsius. Um, that's how a lot of uh, endocrine glands work. For instance, when you look at insulin release related to glucose levels, Blood sugar rises when you eat something that has sugar in it. So you're eating something that has sugar in it. Well, your pancreas is only going to keep releasing insulin until that blood glucose level drops, just like the temperature dropping in a room. So once the blood glucose level uh, gets to an appropriate level, your brain's going to notice that, and it's going to send a signal to the uh, insulin builder and releaser, the pancreas, saying, all right, now you can stop releasing it because we got to the level that we needed to get. So that negative feedback, that drop um, in, in whatever you're modifying or, or drop in whatever you're acting on is going to affect what initiated the process. So a buildup of the product 
uh, or removal of something will eventually shut off what was initiating it, the builders of, of that buildup. You could say it that way. Uh, so just remember the thermostat. Uh, it's, it's very similar to how uh, insulin gets sugars out of the bloodstream. Positive feedback, not as common, uh, because with positive feedback, it's a buildup of the product further stimulates it to like keep happening. Uh, so it just adds and adds and adds and adds and adds uh, to a point. Um, so buildup of the product further enhances the production. Um, one example is labor pains in relation to delivering a baby. So um, hormones stimulating uh, the uterine muscles uh, to, to get the baby out gradually, that's going to keep happening. Um, you know, labor early on, not quite as intense as labor uh, further along. Um, also, uh, the, the piling on of platelets, when you have a, a cut, some kind of laceration in a blood vessel, the piling on of platelets, they keep attracting more and more and more platelets uh, until it's sealed. Uh, that's positive feedback. And also, um, I've read that orgasms have a lot to do with uh, positive feedback. Negative feedback, much more common in terms of uh, regulating hormone levels.